Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on equilibrium. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we are talking about manipulating K expressions. Any kind of K expression. It could be a KEQ like we're, we're talking about right now to begin with in equilibrium. But in the future, we're going to be talking about KAs, KBs, KWs, KSPs, KFs. There's a lot of different Ks. So it will apply to any of the K expressions. Therefore, I didn't include the KEQ, but of course it includes KEQ. All right, so here we go. We're going to write the equilibrium con constant expression for the following reactions. So you got this one here. It says sulfur that's a solid plus oxygen that's a gas produces sulfur dioxide that's a gas. You know, those double-headed arrows right there separating the reactants from the product let you know that this is an equilibrium reaction as opposed to just a single unidirectional arrow. So products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents and bam, that is what you should be getting right there. KEQ is equal to sulfur dioxide, that's in brackets. It's to the first power as an exponent divided by O2, that's in brackets, to the first power as an exponent. And why is the sulfur not included? Because solids are not included in any K expression. That means mathematically, if you add more uh, solid sulfur or remove the sulfur, it doesn't matter and it doesn't affect the value of the K at all. Just as long as you have sulfur in this equation because it can't go forward without the sulfur. All right, let's try another equation right here. And this is ammonia, that's NH3, that's aqueous, that's plus water, that's H2O liquid produces ammonium ion, that's NH4, one plus aqueous, plus hydroxide ion, that's aqueous. Okay, so you're gonna write the KEQ expression for this as well, I'll give you just a moment. That's good enough. Okay, so your KEQ should be brackets in the numerator with ammonium ion, that's NH4, one plus, times hydroxide ion, that's OH1 minus. Both of those have a stoichiometric coefficient of a one, so therefore the exponents are one divided by NH3, which is ammonia, and that has a coefficient of a one, and therefore an exponent of a one. And what is not included? The liquid water, because solids and liquids are not included in K expressions. I know we've discussed that already before, but I wanna make sure that you understand that solids and liquids are not included in any K expressions, just not it doesn't even matter if it's a KEQ, it could be a KA, a KB, a KSP, a KW, or a KF, or any other kind of K. All right, so let's keep on moving. We're still talking about manipulating K expressions. So we're gonna write the uh, equilibrium constant expression and changing the direction. Okay, so we've got this KEQ expression here, our this equation, and we've already written the KEQ expression already before on the previous slide. Okay, so solids are not included and that's why we have this. Now, what if we take this reaction and we reverse it? And that means we flip the reactants and the product and we flip them. So now that the, now with this new equation, I got the product on the reactant side and the two reactants on the product side. Now we're gonna rewrite our KEQ expression. So our KEQ here is the reciprocal of what we had for the top one. So if you change the direction, then you take the reciprocal of the KEQ, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, but I'm gonna make sure that you get this because you're gonna write this down here. It says the K forward reaction is equal to K minus one of that reverse one or one over K of the reverse, okay? So let's just pop in some numbers over here. Let's say the KEQ for this top reaction in the forward direction is 25. What is the KEQ for the reverse one? So you're gonna take that number and take the reciprocal of 25, and that should be 0 0.040, okay? All right, hopefully that's okay with you. Okay, that's changing the direction, switching the reactants from the products, and you take one over the K. All right, let's try another one. We're gonna take the equilibrium constant expression and we're gonna change the coefficients this time. So same equation that we're starting with, that way we have a base of which we got here. We've gotten this one already, solids are not included. 
products over reactant, stoichiometric coefficients as exponents, we got a KEQ for this. Now let's say we need to multiply this equation by some number. It could be any stoichiometric coefficient, but we're going to multiply the entire equation by this number. And we're going to multiply this by a 3 in this particular case. It could have been a 2, it could have been a 1 half, it could have been a 9 eighths, it could have been a 25, it doesn't matter. So. I'm going to rewrite this K expression, and then you should see that, it, remember, it's products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents, and that's why we have the cubed terms on both the sulfur dioxide in the numerator and the oxygen in the denominator, okay? So here's how you get the K. The KEQ is equal to the K. When you multiply it by a coefficient, you're going to take that k and now take it to the power of that coefficient that you're multiplying by. So let's take an example of that. We're going to take 25 and we mul this is our same keq that we had in the top set when we were changing directions, right? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that 25 and we're going to take that 25 to the power of 3 because we have multiplied this equation by 3 so we take it to the power of 3 and I get 15,625. Okay. Hopefully that's okay for you so far. We're still not done. We got a little bit more. Okay. All right, so solids and liquids are not included. Products over reactants with stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. If we flip the, if we change the direction of the reaction, if we flip the equation, it's one over the k. If we multiply the equation, we take the k and we take it to the power of that multiplying factor, that coefficient. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, now we're going to add equations here. Okay, we got that same equation that we had before here, and now we're going to add this equation. Notice that I had in the row, in the columns, I have the reactants on the left-hand side, the product on the right-hand side for both of these reactions. Solids and liquids are not included. There's only one thing that's a solid here. Okay, we're going to add up these equations, and you should see that this is what we get when we add up these equations. Notice that the sulfur dioxide is on both sides. That is, it's on, on the top equation, it's on the product side. On the uh, second equation, it's on the reactant side. And therefore, it's not in the bottom sum of the two equations, which is the net equation on the bottom. The sulfur is dropped down, and the oxygen on the top equation and the one-half oxygen on the bottom equation. I'm going to add those two up. So remember, it's one stoichiometric coefficient in front of the oxygen in the top equation and then the stoichiometric coefficient of a one-half. That's one and one-half, which is three-halves as a fraction. And then we've got that sulfur trioxide as a product. So this is my K expression for the top equation. It's products over reactants, stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. I've highlighted just a couple of things here. One in yellow for the sulfur dioxide for you, okay, so that you're going to see that this cancels out. Okay, and then the other thing is I've included the exponent for the oxygen. Instead of just having a 1, I'm going to say 2 over 2, okay, because this is a fraction, and I'm going to be using that here in this next step. K for the second one is the sulfur trioxide over the sulfur dioxide. Now, notice the sulfur dioxide is in the denominator. I've highlighted that in yellow again. The oxygen is to the 1 half power because it's the exponent, uh, the stoichiometric coefficient becomes the exponent. So you should see that the sulfur dioxide in yellow in the numerator in the K1 expression and the sulfur dioxide in yellow in the denominator in the K2 expression, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, they are going to cancel each other out. Okay? All right. Hopefully that makes sense for you. And then those oxygens, I've got a two halves over a one half, and we're going to be adding up these numbers here. So the K net is the following, okay? I'm going to be adding up the 2 and the 1 numerator terms of the fraction of those exponents of the oxygen. Hopefully you got that. I'm adding the 2 and the 1, that's in the blue aqua color there, in the numerator of both of those, okay? And that gives me the 3 halves, okay? That corresponds to the 3 half fractional coefficient in the net equation, okay? Now, to get the net K... I'm going to take the K1 times the K2. So when I add up equations, I multiply the Ks to get the K net. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. That top equation, the K1 is 25. The bottom equation, K2, is 0.35. Okay, so I'm going to take 25 times 0.35, and that's going to equal 8.75. 
okay? So when you sum up equations, you multiply the k's to get the net k of the sum net equation, okay? Hopefully that makes sense for you. Okay, I'm the crazy hat chemist. I hope you enjoyed that manipulations of the k. Okay, you need to uh, review that lecture again so that you understand how the process is for all these manipulations of the k value. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you next time. And don't forget to look at my website and find all the cool stuff on my website. All right, bye for now.